I'd like to welcome everybody uh, again to our uh, webcast on managing engineering changes with Autodesk Vault Manufacturing. Uh, my name is Stephanie Green. I'm an account manager uh, with Master Graphics in the manufacturing area. And my colleague today, who will be actually presenting it, uh, is Darren Hartenstein, who is our data management supervisor, also in the manufacturing arena. Um, to start things out, I'd like to uh, give just a little bit of background on Master Graphics for those of you who are may not be familiar with us. Uh, as you can see on the screen, we say our mission is to assure that the design, management, and distribution of our clients' CAD information continuously improves due to their ongoing relationship with Master Graphics. And basically, we're successful only if you are successful. Um, and we have had a very successful track record. Uh, we have been in business for 60 years, um, have seen obviously quite a few changes uh, in the industry over that time. We are the largest Autodesk reseller in the Midwest and third largest in the US. We have six offices in three states, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Illinois. And we also cover some of the uh, surrounding states as well, North and South Dakota, uh, Iowa and the UP in Michigan. And what I am very pleased to say is that we also have received national recognition for our data management services in no small part to Darren's efforts on this. So now, why are ECOs, data management, and the enterprise so interconnected? Uh, first of all, the, the last poll that you took um, 73% of you said that uh, managing ECOs is critical within your organization. 27% said it was a moderate uh, importance. So obviously, it is something that, that is very integral to how well your enterprise performs. Uh, when you registered for the seminar, we also asked you several questions in terms of um, kind of key initiatives or trends that we're seeing in industry right now, and how many of you have uh, your companies are participating in them. And what I'd like to do is just go through those very quickly and um, say where we see the, the ties between data management and the change order process and those particular initiatives. Uh, first of all, lean quality and continuous improvement uh, an electronic ECO process is very critical to successful implementation of those. Uh, first and foremost, uh, the electronic process eliminates waste, both material and effort, and errors, which are obviously extreme, extremely important hallmarks of all, all of those types of initiatives. It also provides a measurable, repeatable process, which is also another key element of how those types of initiatives are implemented. In terms of certification and compliance programs, what we have is a, an electronic ECO process gives you a documented form of processes. It is audible, and it has an enforcement of the change, chain of command, which is very, very critical, uh, particularly in a situation like uh, the FDA, to receiving that certification. In terms of uh, green initiatives, Obviously, in an electronic ECO, ECO process, you will end up replacing paper processes, and one would hope uh, decrease the amount of paper that uh, is generated. But on the other side of that, it also provides a structure for sustainable design processes um, in terms of um, capturing corporate knowledge, uh, helping to establish the processes by which uh, critical sustainable design elements are enforced in design, and a number of other things. And then finally, internal communication, the electronic ECO process, and it certainly is going to be um, uh, shown today, touches pretty much all elements of your organization, manufacturing, marketing, management, anybody who is involved in the um, product design workflow. It also is an a, the 
kind of foundation component of the digital prototyping process. And uh, speaking of digital prototyping, digital prototyping is the, excuse me, just one second. My apologies for the cough there. Um, as I said, the Autodesk vault manufacturing is a critical element of the digital uh, prototyping solution from Autodesk. The, the key concept of digital prototyping is that you are working from one single digital model. The Vault manufacturing is that communication framework that allows everybody to communicate against that particular model. Um, so I would ask that you keep that in mind as, you're, as we're going through the presentation today that of how working with that single digital model, having the communication tools in place that allow anybody and everybody throughout the organization that needs to understand what your product design is, you have that framework for being able to communicate that. And with that, I will turn it over to Darren to um, provide the real world look at what vault manufacturing can do along with uh, engineering change orders. Thank you, Stephanie, for that introduction. Um, just to give you an overview of how this presentation is going to proceed, I've got uh, a few slides that I'm going to go through here just to give you uh, an idea of the types of reasons for change. We're going to go through and talk a little bit about the paper process that a lot of companies are, are currently using. And then we're going to get into the benefits of an electronic change order process. Uh, this presentation will have a, a demonstration at the end here, probably anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes, where we're going to get into vault manufacturing and show you an overview of an existing change order and the types of collaborative efforts that can be done through that change order and how, how the overall framework is organized for that change order. So there's an ANSI standard out there, I'm sorry, an ISO standard out there that defines the reasons for change orders. And that could be uh, depending upon the altered function of a part or different types of production requirements. There could be a change in the application of a part. Uh, maybe there's going to be a new design of a part that's going to be introduced to a machine. Uh, maybe there is an obsolete need to, to get rid of a part and replace it with a new, more functional part. Uh, but all these are standard reasons for managing changes within an engineering department. With a paper-based change order process, a lot of times you have kind of out of sight, out of control, where if it's sitting in a desk, there's no way to really manage that, that paper process. You really don't know where it's at. If you've got several individuals that are involved in the process, it's difficult to know where that change order is sitting. And there's a lot of manual effort that needs to happen to make sure that the process continues on and it continues on successfully. Another thing is paper really isn't scalable. You know, if you're a small organization and you've got assemblies of, let's say, under 100 parts, you know, the amount of drawings that you create from that isn't, isn't too much to be able to handle with a paper-based process. Um, as you get larger or you get more individuals involved within your, your process, it really becomes difficult to manage all that paper. In conjunction with that, communication in the change order process is very critical. There's a lot of collaborative efforts that are going on where individuals are writing information that, that is relevant or important to the change order process. And if it's not being captured somehow digitally or electronically, it can be lost. And there's no way to reference that information in the future. 